Hello, everybody. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays to everybody out there. We are going to be doing just a quick, really quick video and running through my initial thoughts on the on the thing on the Christmas, almost a Thanksgiving Day slate. On the Christmas Day slate, it's a little tricky because we really don't know who's playing entirely yet. There's a lot of uh, stuff up in the air, as you know. It's usual for this time of year, but not like this. So we are going to try and break it down really quickly, going by game by game. And I'm just going to talk through my, my the plays I like. On Atlanta, I'm going to be very heavy on Bogdanovich, assuming that he's good to go. He did play more minutes on the back-to-back -back than he did in the front one. That's partly because of the injuries to DeLon Wright and Cam Reddish. If DeLon Wright is out, uh, you're going to have, want to play Bogdanovich. Cam Reddish is the other one that's going to be basically a plug-and-play for me for most, most of my lineups, um, assuming that he is good to go. He's got the ankle issue also. John Collins, another one that I like. I would rank him third on this team or fourth on this team behind a Kong Wu, who I actually have rated ahead of Jang. I don't really care who starts here. If they're going to let a Kong Wu play 35 minutes on a back-to-back, -back, there's no reason on Christmas Day you're not going to get their best foot forward. And to me, that's a Kong Wu ahead of Jang. I don't mind Jang. I will have some exposure to him. But that's how I have them ranked. I like Bogdanovich, assuming if, if Wright's out. If Wright's in, I like Wright. Um, but we're going to have to wait to see how that one shakes out. I do think Bogdanovich and Reddish, if there's no Wright especially, are going to be staples of my lineups. So... The other side of that game is interesting because if R.J. Barrett plays, which it looks like he's going to, that's going to – what do we do with Kemba Walker? I'm going to still take some tournament shots on him, um, but if R.J. Barrett plays and Kemba somehow starts and maybe Fournier goes to the bench or something, you could see something different with their lineup. They could – I don't think they'd play Julius at the five to start. I think they're going to start Robinson. Hard to know with, with, with the Barrett situation. I don't mind Barrett as a play on his own. He's been, you know, health, you know just trying to get back to shape. Um, and then on Fandle, you can play Burks, of course – and Fournier would make for a solid play. I actually think Fournier might be a better play with Kemba out. Well, he's pretty close either way, um, if Barrett's in. Uh, not Kemba out, Kemba on the bench. But I do think that this is going to be a tough one to figure out and something we're going we're to cover for you at 11 a.m. Eastern time tomorrow. Sheets and I will be ready uh, as we try to go through this. I will be maxing, max entering the million-dollar tournament, so I'm going to be all over this. Um, hopefully everything uh, – works out and we get good news and we, we take, some, take, take something down. Um, in the Boston-Milwaukee game on the Boston side, it's you're not going to see anybody projecting extremely well. I think that there's an argument for Jalen Brown as a tournament play that's pretty solid, and I think there's a good argument for Robert Williams if there's no Horford. Now, if Horford plays, I don't think you need to go there, but I don't mind him. I just think there's a lot of blah for me in this game, assuming everybody plays. We're going to have to wait and see. Um, J J Marcus Smart and, and Jason Tatum are my two favorites. With Robert, well, Robert Williams would be my favorite if there's no Horford. On the other side, the Bucks, I think they're going to be back and, and ready to go, which kind of makes me just want to play Giannis. Uh, there's an obvious spend up that we're going to talk about later, but Giannis is the, is the preferred play uh, on their side. Uh, it's interesting what they'll do with Nora if like Portis is still not in and they play cut. Like, I don't know what they're going to do. I, I'm still interested in Nora as a tournament play, but a long shot tournament play. I'm aware that he's not uh, a guy you're trying to get in. Giannis is a, is a phenomenal play. He's had some huge Thanksgiving, uh, some cr huge Christmas days in the past. And we're going to be able to probably afford two spend ups. And he would be my third favorite uh, at first glance of all the spend ups, assuming that he's good to go, which we should have news for tomorrow. Golden State and Phoenix, uh, long shot Steph Curry play, always in play. Uh, again, if, if, if the ownership goes too much towards him, stay away from it. He did put up the, the big game on, uh, on against Memphis the other night, it's, you know, a game that I liked him, but I didn't want to play him at the high ownership. And obviously you didn't need him. You could have done a million different things and been right on Wednesday. Um, I'm sorry, Thursday, but Steph is my favorite play from the Warriors side. If you want to, uh, sorry, from my favorite spend up. I do like Draymond a little bit. I think he's good in these competitive games. And then you get the weird, you know, value, assuming that Otto Porter is good and starts again and there's nobody else coming and then we don't get all of a sudden, you know, I don't know who's going to play. So that's that's what we're really worried about. If, if it goes the way it was before and Porter's still starting, I, I do like Porter. I don't mind Gary Payton the second, but I don't think you need to do that, but you can use him as a placeholder. And then I like Juan Descano Anderson, assuming that the lineups break out, shake out like this. Um, we're going to need to see the starting lineup and then you can always pivot to these guys because they're all in the same price range. Um, and maybe Jonathan Kaminga gets a start or something like that if we you know, if we, we've just seen that out of the blue. We've seen Moses Moody get starts. So I, I would consider those guys as long shot tournament plays. On the other side, it's hard to play on DraftKings, the, the price for these guys. But I do think Chris Paul and Devin Booker have some upside in this kind of game environment. I also feel like uh, Jay Crowder at 4,300 is mildly interesting to me. And then Bridges or Cam Johnson are fine, but not guys who I'm prioritizing. Cam Payne is kind of an interesting long shot tournament play. Could play well against the Warriors type of, type of pace. Um 
on the Nets and Brooklyn game, this is where you're going to be wanting to target a lot of things, I think, um, as where I'm at right now. It's, it's really tricky to figure out because we don't know who's playing yet for the Nets. Um, but James Harden is the premier play. Uh, it's going to be really hard for to keep him out of my lineups. I've currently got him at 75%, and even that's probably a little low. But I've got him in all my big buy-ins right now. It's really hard for me not to play him in this matchup against the Lakers with no KD. Um, so he's, he's my priority. I do think Bembry, if he plays, is going to be interesting. Claxton is going to be interesting if he plays. Blake Griffin gets a little bit of a boost down if Claxton plays, but I still kind of like him. Uh, Paul Millsap is still an interesting tournament play. I just think you're going to mix these guys, but for me, it's mostly going to be Harden, and then we need to see who else is available before we make our decisions. And I, it's going to be like that way a lot. I mean, we're doing this a day in advance and in the current NBA, which I mean, literally these teams could have like nine different players playing <laughs> than the guys they have with the way things are shaking out. Um, on the Lakers side, I think LeBron is my second favorite spend up behind Harden on the slate. Uh, always plays well on Christmas been absolutely tearing it up lately I mean, only blowouts have sort of stopped him from going nuts I think you're going to get a, a, the best version of LeBron and I think that assuming this game stays close LeBron and Harden are a natural way to start your lineups uh, I think Westbrook's a good long shot tournament play and I think that uh, that mixing in the THTs and Ellingtons in a, in a good pace kind of a game like this is going to be interesting but I mostly am doing it to sort of see what happens later in the day that's just what I've got in my early builds and then the weird Dwight Howard long shot play is not a, not something I mind as well as Rajon Rondo. But I think that you're mainly focusing on LeBron, probably Rondo next actually uh, with Ellington right there. And then uh, some THT in Westbrook, but LeBron is the LeBron and, and Harden are, are I think where you start your spend ups in the last game of the night. I think it might get a little bit, maybe a little bit overlooked. Um, I think Jalen Brunson is a terrific play. I know he let me down last night, um, which was a bummer, but He's a uh, 7,600 if, if KP is out, especially, but we don't know that yet. So if KP is in a little less interested in Brunson, but still interested and also interested in Sterling Brown and his price actually been, been, been pretty productive at 3,900 as has Dorian Finney Smith. And I kind of like the idea of playing these guys. So you get the late start. This is the kind of game where Dallas used to do weird things like play Boban to start. And if that happens, it would be nice to have that three K spot available. You can go ahead and start Dwight Powell or Moses Brown, even as a weird long shot play. Um, but I think Boban has a chance to play here and, and I don't think they're going to mess with their starting lineup. Um, cause it's not really kids way as much as it was Carlisle's thing, but I do think if, if, if Porzingis is out, there's a chance Boban starts, um, just a really long shot, just, just throwing it out there. I mean, we're trying to get different and win a million dollars here against a million people. So just thought I'd mention it. I think Mike Conley is an overlooked play in the last game. That's interesting. I think Joe Ingles and Jordan Clarkson playing the blowout angle are really interesting as is Rudy Gay. So that I'm trying to backload some of my value so I can try and have some of these guys in case we get somebody out. And if we're stuck with it, we can play the Joe Ingles and, and Rudy Gay and, and, and Clarkson type of guys. And, and uh, the Lakers, you know, maybe you could take a shot with Ellington, hope it's the 6-3 game that he hits. Hope that Rondo goes off at, you know, 3,600. He's been really good on big national televised games in the past. I'm sure you guys know that, but it's hard with Westbrook there um, to, for those two to play together that much. So that's the only thing that worries me about that. But I do think trying to backload at the as, at early look is unless we get confirmation on players early in the day is the way to go. Guys like Skylar Mays, I don't know, maybe come and play for the Hawks like in the early games, and we don't we just don't know yet. Um, this is just my, my my quick sum up just to give you guys some initial builds you can go to. I think the main plays you're focusing on are some of the Atlanta value, uh, not knowing what that is yet, but uh, James Harden, LeBron James, and then we figure out the rest is going to be like the base build for me. Um, and I'm going to mix in a lot of Giannis for, instead of LeBron's in certain places, it's really hard for me to get off of, uh, get off of Harden here. Uh, to be honest, that's really the toughest thing I'm having a hard time with. I don't know if I need to, so I might not do it, but, uh, yeah, that's sort of a, a quick little glance at the, the Christmas day slate. I most importantly hope everybody has a wonderful holiday with their family. And, uh, I also want to say that, uh, I hope you make a bunch of money and me and Cheech will be with you at 11 AM Eastern time. And we'll try to fix, sort this out for you and uh, crush it. Good luck, everybody. Happy holidays. I'm Bobby, and I hope that you guys have a wonderful day. Good luck, everybody.